In our lecture on consumer decisions, finance, and portfolio theory, we talked about how prices capture and reflect information through time with discussions of the permanent income hypothesis and the efficient market hypothesis. When there's a cost to being incorrect, the incentives create our best guess at prediction, i.e., it's hard to beat markets. We realize that the prices within markets reflect the information of what people know. So it's hard to beat markets, in other words, as the economists joke, it's hard to find a $100 bill on the sidewalk. But we ended up by noting that we shouldn't think about markets as perfect. People make mistakes at times in predictable ways. And some look to better understand massive market failures through these anomalies. We'll consider these economists' ideas and critiques as we go forward in this video lecture. The first thing for us to realize is that not all betting markets or all markets where money is on the line are completely efficient. Perhaps in some markets there are some anomalies. We'll take a look at just a couple of ideas that get at some of the concepts or maybe the potential bias towards is this an anomaly or is this actually efficient? The first concept we can talk about is called the January effect or the calendar, January calendar effect. There's evidence that shows that there's higher returns in January to the stock market than the rest of the year. The recurrent nature of this anomaly suggests that the market is not efficient. Unfortunately, the existence of this anomaly itself is actually debated. Some relate it to the idea that a lot of people, stockbrokers, etc., sell off a lot of their stocks in December and therefore undervalue some of the stocks at the start of January. So it's actually an efficient response to the tax rules that we have in place. And yet there's some opportunities for gains to be had. So there's even debate as to if this bias actually occurs. But we'll concede it. We'll say maybe there is a January effect where you can get higher returns in January and thus there's not an efficient market here. Another fun example comes to us from Richard Thaler, the author of The Winner's Curse, who explores some anomalies. One example comes from horse racing, where money is very clearly on the line. Probably the best known uh, bias in horse racing, according to Thaler, is the long shot bias. The expected returns in horse racing increase with the probability of the horse winning. In other words, betting on a favorite has good returns and betting on a long shot has really, really bad returns, relatively speaking. Now, is this an anomaly? Are people betting their money incorrectly? Are they not cap getting captured good knowledge into the price system? Do the betting markets here fail? One explanation is that at the end of the day, bettors who have lost throughout the day, switch to a long shot and bet on a bad horse in order to have a chance at breaking even. All right, so you bet on a horse that has 40 to 1 odds to try and recoup all of the losses that you have had throughout the day. Thus, more money is pouring into these slow, low probabilistic win horses than should be making it seem as though people are finding out that they really are faster horses than they are. Unfortunately, they're not, and the smart money is still on the faster horses at the racetrack. Thus, we have an anomaly. Or, we just have different incentives to the situation, and that people are actually responding rationally to their irrational loss aversion uh, input or their bias towards how they get utility out of horse racing. Maybe they just don't want to walk away with any losses and so they're acting rationally even though it's not smart money. So what we can see from these debates is the idea that maybe markets aren't perfect. Maybe they're not efficient in all cases even when money's on the line. Well, the problem with this is it could cause markets to potentially crash in some situations. In contrast to Eugene Fama, father of the efficient market hypothesis and others, theorists such as Joseph Stiglitz, pictured here, have built their career on demonstrating the fragility of the neoclassical model of market efficiency. 
Stiglitz himself stresses imperfections in the information that actors possess, and thus argues that the market perversities, rather than market perfection, are likely to result. During the 1990s to about 2015, there has been this big wave in behavioral economics that have shown other anomalies like the lottery game and horse race betting and other things like the January effect. These concepts became in vogue and they tried to show off the potential for markets to fail and the weakness of the idea of the efficient market hypothesis way of thinking. So does this mean anomalies are for the win and that economics has kind of been overturned by this recent wave of behavioral economics? Given the stock market crashes of the early and late 2000s, the verdict seems to be simple. The informational burden of the investment market during the 2000s obviously seemed to be greater than what the efficient market hypothesis could bear. But this interpretation is really too simple. It's only part of the story. Were those anomalies actually rational responses to the behavior and institutions that we set up? Or were these anomalies actually a small crack that ca caused a larger divide in how the markets actually operate? Was it from the anomaly or was it from rational response? I think the anomalies are only part of the story. How can we possibly explain such big jumps without major, other major external negative information shocks? Even the strictest model of competitive equilibrium does not contend that government policy cannot derail the market economy. To use an analogy for the late 2000s market crash, was it anomaly or was it from institutions? We can use Michael Phelps, a world famous Olympic level swimmer. If Michael Phelps were thrown into a pool of water with his hands tied and his legs shackled with a weighted ball, he would still be the world's best swimmer even if he sank. He simply would be prevented from swimming. The problem is not the swimmer failure, but the rope and shackle and the weighted ball that prevent him from making the very movements required to swim effectively. We can parallel this to the efficient market hypothesis. The fit markets might be really, really good at swimming or at making the proper response to situations. However, if we weigh them down, they won't swim so well. So if government interventions distort information and provide perverse incentives, and in this, situa this situation economic actors make mistakes, the market is not leading them astray. The government event interventions have discouraged the market participants from weeding out the error or the anomaly. You can see how this debate gets quite murky and there's a lot of gray area. You should be aware of the debate over efficient market hypothesis and understand that some people contend that anomalies can cause efficient markets to work almost all the time, but could lead towards massive error.